Great. Hello, everybody. In the previous video, we took a look at masks in Photoshop, and today we're going to take more uh, of a look at masks and how we can use them creatively when creating textures. So this morning, I went out and I just photographed a bunch of different interesting surfaces that I could find. And here are those images. Uh, so for this example, we'll go ahead and create a new document. I'm going to make it 2048 by 2048 because I'm planning on using it as a texture in Maya. I'll click on Create. And I'm going to put down a uh, solid color on the background. It doesn't really matter at this point what that color is. This is just for illustration purposes. Uh, so I'll just drop this color in here. And then I'm going to go and take a look at those images, uh, those photographs that I took this morning. And I'm simply going to uh, select one of them. I'll select this one and copy it. Come over to my document and paste it. Now I might still choose to uh, maybe scale this layer. Perhaps something like this and I'll press enter. Now what's going to be interesting about this demonstration is that while we're going to be using this stone texture that I photographed, we're not going to be using it directly. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit more interesting with it through masks. Let me hide that layer temporarily. We'll create a additional layer here, uh, which we will also uh, put a flat color in. Uh, and I'll just make it a little different than, than the other color that's underneath it so that we have these two layers. Currently I have my background layer and I have uh, this layer two. And of course we have the stone image that I just brought into, uh, into this document here. Let me just look at this briefly, see if there's a nice area to select. Okay, so what am I going to do now? Well, I'm in my layer that has the stone texture in here, and I'm going to go to Select Color Range. And then in here, I can select a color that I like. Perhaps I want to select some of these very light areas in my texture. Uh, so I'll just click on one of them. And then I can adjust the fuzziness. Uh, if I drag the fuzziness to the left here, it's going to select a very little bit of, uh, of the image. If I bring it over here, it'll select a greater uh, area of it. Uh, perhaps we'll do something maybe around the middle for this example. And I'm going to say OK. And what you're going to notice is that we now have a selection. But what I'm going to do is hide this layer, go to this layer 2, that's this layer here, and I'm going to apply a mask to it. And as you can see, this did something very interesting. If we look at just the mask by itself, here's what the mask looks like, the mask that we created through our selection of the stone texture. Uh, and by masking out uh, this kind of oh, uh, split pea soup green color that I created, we get the red color underneath coming through. Now, one of the benefits of using these masks to get this effect is, of course, that I can hide or unhide these layers, uh, but also I can work with these two layers independently of one another. We can still come in here and very easily uh, adjust the color. If I want to make it darker, for instance, or lighter, or if I want to make it more saturated or less saturated, or perhaps shift the color. I think I will make it a little darker here. And maybe I'll desaturate it a little as well. I 
I can come in then to this uh, split pea soup colored layer here and uh, perhaps adjust it as well. I'm actually liking a lot of these different color combinations I'm getting here. Uh, but maybe I'll go with this. Let's go ahead and create yet another layer here. Uh, we'll fill it in with a solid color. And I'll go back to my layer with the stone and we'll go ahead and try it again. This time, uh, once again, I'll go to select color range. Uh, and maybe we'll select some of these kind of darker areas here. Uh, and we'll adjust the fuzziness. This time we'll select a much uh, smaller area, let's say, or smaller selection. And say, OK. We have our selection. Uh, now I'll... Uh, return to my layer three, this green one, and we'll go ahead and apply a mask to it as well. If we want to take a look at the mask by itself, we can do that. Here's what my mask looks like. And maybe I'll adjust the color a little. And perhaps we'll go with something like this. Let's try uh, bringing in another one of my uh, images here. Uh, pick, pick one that maybe will work well for this example. Something different, let's say, than the uh, other one. Uh, this is a nice one because it's a, a very different stone texture. Uh, I will once again select everything in here and copy it, go to my uh, working file here, and we'll paste it in here. Uh, I will quickly come in here and scale it. And position it. We'll go ahead and create another uh, layer, which we'll put on top of our uh, layer here, the one that I'm indicating with my mouse here. Uh, and we'll give it a solid color. Here it is. And I'm going to go back to this new layer that we created. And once again, go to my select color range. And uh, we'll pick an area that we like. Perhaps something like this. We can play around with the fuzziness. Maybe I'll try some other areas. I want to have a, we'll select some of the really dark areas of this image is what we'll do. And we'll do something like maybe this. We have our selection. I'll hide that. Go once again to this layer now and create my mask. We can adjust the color a little. And perhaps I'll go with something like that. So I think that I actually like this texture better without this last layer that I created. Uh, I kind of like this. It looks like some sort of uh, surface, maybe some kind of metal surface that uh, has had peeling paint and rust. 
Uh, I think this could be quite a nice texture. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this layer here. Uh, before wrapping up this video, let's go ahead and take a look at these individual layers um, by themselves. So I'm actually going to uh, create a new layer, which I'm going to place at the bottom. And, oh, I'll just drop a uh, white color on that. And we'll take a look at the individual layers that we have here. So the uh, first layer that we created was just this solid color here. I'll hide that. The second one we created was uh, this one here where we created this color and then we masked out this area. And then we also created this uh, layer here with this color where we also masked it out using this mask here. Uh, and then when they're laid on top of one another, you get this nice rich texture here. So that's a little bit about how you can use masks to create some really rich and unique textures for your 3D modeling and animation projects. I'll see you next time.